In this lesson, we'll be creating multiple copies of the same setup with WCS offsets. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to use multiple WCS offsets and identify the difference between offset for a single setup versus multiple setups. Let's carry on with the file from our previous example, and let's talk a bit more about WCS offsets. This is a tricky topic, so I want to make sure we spend a little bit more time on it to make sure that we understand exactly what our options are and what Fusion 360 is looking for in terms of posting. So if we take a quick look at the SoftJaw Setup 1 and Post Process, we currently have the WCS offset set to 1, and we don't have the multiple WCS offsets selected. If we take a look at SoftJaw Setup 2, we have this set to 3 currently. Now 3, again, is going to be G56. This was the last one that we incremented. If we set it to 2, it'll be G55. If we set it to 1, it'll be G54. 0, again, is going to take the next available, which will be G54 in this case. What we want to look at and identify is going to be the option that's below this called multiple WCS offsets. While we looked at posting multiple setups with different WCS offsets, G54 and G55, using this option for multiple WCS offsets is a little bit different. What this will do is it'll allow us to post this setup or specific operations we have selected and copy them at a different G location. In order to make this work, the WCS offset for the first one cannot be zero. It has to at least be one, which is G54, or some other value, G55, G56, and so on. When we turn on the multiple WCS offsets, the number of instances must include the original. For example, if we set this to 3 and we increment by 1, what will happen is the next one will be G55 and G56, giving us a total of 3 offsets. Also notice the operation order. We can preserve the order, which will create the operations in this case, the drilling, tapping, and slot clearing. It will create those in order three different times. If we order by operation or tool, however, it will adjust this so that it posts a little bit more efficiently in terms of the operations we're looking at. It will clear the slots on all three pieces first. Then it will go back and it will drill all the holes on three pieces. And then it will tap all the holes on three pieces. Because the rapid movement of the non-cutting tool is quite a bit faster, it makes sense for us to reduce the number of tool changes we have to go through. Every time the tool comes up and goes through a tool change, it'll wrap it up to the home position of the machine, it'll change the tool, and then it'll come back. And each time it has to stop and start the spindle again, stop and start the coolant. There are a lot of other things that happen to make that process work. So let's explore posting this out with WCS offset set to 1, number of instances to 3, the increment of 1, and order by tool and say OK. So now if we post this, I'm going to increment this to be 10010 and say post and save it. So now if we take a look at the code, we have G54 for our slot toolpath. And if we come down, the second operation is slot referencing G55. If we come down a little bit farther, we have slot referencing G56. So if we come down a little bit farther, we start to get into our peck drilling. Again, referencing G54, G55, and G56. So you'll notice at the beginning of the first peck drilling cycle, we're stopping the spindle, we're calling for a tool change, we're starting the spindle again, and then we're referencing G54. However, when it goes to the next peck drilling cycle, all it has to do is reference the coordinate system because the tool is still there and it's still spinning and it doesn't have to stop and go back to home position. Same thing with peck drilling on the third cycle. It just references G54 so the machine knows where XYZ0 is. As we go down to tap, again, it references the stopping, the changing of the tool, the restarting of the tool, and then G54, G55, and G56. So hopefully this adds a little clarity into how we can use multiple WCS offsets, both to manually control the G number that is in each setup and post the code together, or to use multiple WCS offsets to create copies of what we've already done. There are other ways that we can do this, for example, coming in and selecting a pattern. When we select a pattern, we can pattern our toolpaths, and these can all reference the same G location. 
So for example, if we knew that we had three of these parts and vices that were located six inches apart in each instance, then we could create a pattern of the toolpath. All of these would still reference the original G location unless we overrode the WCS offset and created a new increment for the pattern. So there are multiple options here that we can explore for WCS offset, and some of them are going to depend again on the functionality of your machine. But make sure that you understand you play around with these so that next time you need to use them, you can come in and understand what each of these options mean. From here, let's go ahead and make sure that we save our file before we move on. 